Hi everybody, I'm DJ Foster, joined by Grand Valley State head football coach Matt Mitchells. The Lakers preparing for their third round of the NCAA playoffs this Saturday, a 2 p.m. Eastern, a noon local time start against Colorado State Pueblo. Mitch, before we talk about uh, Colorado State Pueblo and a rematch from a couple years ago in the playoffs, let's talk about Ferris State. Last Saturday, a huge win, 38-34. Uh, you exacted revenge for the second straight week in a row against a Gleic team that defeated you earlier in the regular season. What was the what was the difference from beating them this week as opposed to falling to them uh, earlier in the regular season? Yeah, uh, you know, obviously that was a big win. I think a uh, great job by our coaches and kids, to be honest with you, come out here and get beat 61-24 uh, to roll back and beat them at their place. Uh, when they had all the momentum and 17 seniors and a Harlan Hill Award winner, I think you got to give uh, you know our team a lot of credit. I thought our assistant coaches uh, worked diligently to get a plan uh, based on our personnel and kind of what they were seeing, and then. Uh, our kids did a great job. You know, we, we've matured a lot as a football team, and, and uh, since that, that week three contest, it's been 10 weeks, and I think you can point to the production development of uh, Bart Williams, you know, along that time. And, you know, again, to, I think, point to the type of kids we have in our program and the character and the resiliency. Uh, we didn't have uh, Jamie Potts, and uh, who've been playing all year for us well, and we didn't have Brandon Bean, who mm -hmm. he, that was the guy who hurt him the most, you know, first time around. So without your two, two your, you know, top three receivers arguably it's great to have guys that uh, like uh, you know Urson Smith step up in those big games and, and make those plays and so the fact that he was prepared to do that in that moment in that situation is a credit to him it's a credit to our assistant coaches and I thought we had a great game plan on both sides of the ball and to reverse a score like that I think it's a it's a testament to our coaching staff and also a testament to players in our program absolutely one of the best wins certainly in recent Laker memory for Grand Valley State uh, in addition to what you were saying, how have you seen this team grow, especially late in the season and these last two weeks on the road against undefeated playoff teams? Yeah, you know, I don't think there's any substitute for experience. And, um, you know, we, we've, we've learned from some of our experiences throughout the course of the season. We've had some – uh, some highs, but we've had some lows too. You know, we've had some failures, and and, and I don't think failures are bad if you grow from them. And I, I feel like our failures in the season, and, and obviously we had two losses. Those are big picture failures, but there are some other failures that individuals had uh, throughout the course of the season that they've they've learned from those failures. And so, uh, for us to react that way, I think again uh, speaks a little bit of the culture and the way that we've we've done things with throughout the course of our program. And um, you never want to lose football games, but I don't think we're in this position if we hadn't lost those games. You know, I, there would have uh, sometimes when, when things are going great and, and easy, there's a sense of complacency. We never had that at any point really in our program. And I think that uh, lack of sense of complacency, a sense of urgency, uh, the attention to what we got to get done, I think has really been serving us uh, well so far the past two weeks. Very interesting. So now you're on the road again for third straight week. You go a little farther uh, to the west side of the, of the country. Uh, Colorado State Pueblo, a team you played two years ago in the playoffs, you defeated them at Colorado State Pueblo uh, to come back home after that uh, with the victory. Um, what do you know about Pueblo? They obviously upset Midwestern State last week, so uh, they are in the big home game. It's a four seed versus six seed in the region. Talk about Pueblo a little bit. Well, they're the defending Division II national champions. Um, you know, there's two main things that stick out on tape for us, the rushing offense and their defense in general. Um, you know, Their defense last year, uh, they, they won the national championship game 14 nothing. I mean, that's remarkable wow. <clears throat> in this day and age of football to, to shut somebody out in a national championship game. It doesn't happen. So uh, they're very, very solid. You know, they've got a couple of returners up front that are excellent players. You know, uh, uh, the, the interior defensive line is stout. It's extremely stout, and they do a really good job. And then, obviously, the rushing attack. Uh, they think they're fifth in the nation in terms of rushing yards. Uh, they get after it. They're physical. Uh, they have a lot of different sets and a lot of different run schemes, and they, they put a lot of pressure on your defense, both with their personnel and also with the shifts, the motions, the sets, the different run schemes. I mean, they have a, a lot of former Division One coaches on their coaching staff. These guys are good football coaches and know how to attack defenses, and they, they're doing that probably a little bit more in the run game this year uh, just because that's where the experience of their football team lies at the running back position as opposed to some of the other quarterback position, things like that. So they got a game plan for how to win ball games. I think, you know, watching tape uh, from game one all the way, you know, through them too, they've grown and developed as a football team too. I think they've really honed in on what their identity Identity is they, they know how the game wants to go down from their standpoint and uh, I think again that's a credit to their coaches for understanding their personnel and, and doing a good job getting ready to go. You beat them two years ago so obviously they're, they're vulnerable they have some weaknesses what do you think those are? Well, you know, two years ago is two years ago. Uh, there's a lot of difference. There are differences here. There's differences with them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think for us, uh, the turnover thing is huge and uh, special teams. I mean, if you look at them, they're very explosive in the return game, uh, both the kick return and the punt return game. They set up great field position for their offense with their return schemes. And then they also force some turnovers, you know, and uh, have done a good job. So uh, we have done a really good job not fumbling the football. If you look back the, the past five, six weeks, Grand Valley, we've thrown some picks, which we obviously trying to get clean up, but we haven't put the ball on the ground really 
uh, in terms of our skill guys, and I've been preaching that all week. We cannot allow uh, College State Pueblo to have short fields based on turnovers or short fields based on uh, the return game. And I've been hitting it pretty hard because I think that's going to be a key to this game is the special teams and the turnovers. And a lot of times when you get in these contests, average starting field position and turnovers uh, tend to dictate them, and that's really, I think, our big keys to the game. Grand Valley State and Colorado State Pueblo in the third round of the NCAA playoffs this Saturday. A noon local start, a 2 p.m. Eastern start between the Lakers and the Thunderwolves. Mitch, thanks for your time. Good luck this weekend in the playoffs. All right, thank you.